ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين thank Allah Azza wa Jal and praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins to make us from salihin righteous muttaqin Allahumma ameen subhanallah before we start again as we talked Saturday subhanallah Friday night there was an earthquake that happened in Morocco and more than 2,000 people have passed away ask Allah to accept them as shuhada and martyrs Allahumma ameen to make it easy for them and to save the lives of those who are entrapped daily Allahumma ameen and last night in another part of the, of the world which is Libya more than 2,000 people are believed subhanallah that may be dead because of the flooding they are considering that catastrophic unprecedented flood and flooding subhanallah may Allah make it easy uh, and these are signs of the day of the judgment and as the Prophet mentioned, Kathrat was Zalazil. Yeah, and a lot of uh, earthquakes is one of the signs of the day of the judgment. And all these calamities uh, uh, happening, ask Allah Azza to accept them as Shuhada too, because the one who uh, dies as drowned, the Muslim is considered as a shaheed or martyr. And may Allah make it easy for them to be fine people alive and to make it easy for the family members and beloved ones. Allahumma ameen. And this is. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Ma asabakum min musibatin illa bi idni Allah, wa ma min billahi yahdi qalba, wa Allah bi kulli shayin alim." A believer who believes in the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, there is no musibah, there is no calamity that happens except with the the idn and the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa ma min billahi yahdi qalba. Whoever believes in Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah will guide his heart. Wa Allah bi kulli shayin alim. Allah is all knowing for everything that happens. Everything that happens. It happens because of his wisdom, because of his hikmah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was uh, watching a short uh, video clip today, subhanAllah. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal, wahi wa humit. He is the one who brings life and who is the one who brings death. Imagine in those rubbles, a lot of people, whoever died, they found a new baby, or a girl, I think, born. Just maybe, subhanAllah, the mother passed away and it was just next to the rubbles. She was alive. Can you imagine? Yani, all of this, so you would think that this baby would be like it's, uh, it can be, it has higher possibility to die than the rest of the people. But subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa gives life to somebody and brings death for, uh, causes death for somebody else for hikam, for wisdom. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give the patience to those who are alive from the family members and to, have to accept the uh, deceased ones as shuhada and martyrs. May Allah Azza wa Jal yaqeena shadr al-fitan. May Allah Azza wa protect us from the fitan. Ma dhahra minha wa ma batn. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Going back to our topic, inshallah tonight we have the last chapter of the book and that is Kitab al chapter of emancipating slaves. I will finish this book, inshallah ta'ala, with this chapter. Kitab al-Atq. Al-Atq, in Arabic language, is izalatul mulk, or emancipating. Yani, to remove the state of being owned. Uh, and that, in Arabic language, it comes beautifully. How it's in Arabic language is, is amazing. It comes from the word, ataqal faras idha sabaq. If the, the horse... Say ataqa, meaning that he is ahead of the, the, the rest. Uh, he he uh, escaped, or he is ahead in, in front of the rest of the people, the rest of the horses. Or ataqa al-fakh, idha ta. If the bird ataqa, it means in Arabic, if the, if the bird flies, so ataqa, meaning he escaped, uh, he flew. So that's why al-raqiq, or the, the slave, when he's freed, that he escaped the servitude or he's escaped that, that life uh, of, of being uh, a slave that's why it's called uh, in islam we have encouragement to emancipate or free slaves and what is the value of it allah says 
فلا اقتحم العقبه وما ادراك ما العقبه فك رقبه. What can be translated as but he has made no effort to pass on the path that is steep. And what will you make you know the path that is steep? What is that path which is steep? Is it's, it's hard. The Prophet the Allah Azra says, يعني one of the means to reach that, it is to free a neck, to free a slave. That's raqaba in Arabic language, means neck, literally. This is raqaba, neck. Meaning that to free a person who has that neck. So freeing the person. Uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrates that the Prophet sallallahu he said, أَيُّمَا الرَّجُلٍ فَاعْتَقَ أَمْرًا مُسْلِمًا إِسْتَنْقَضَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ عُضْوٍ مِنْهُ عُضْوًا مِنْ مِنْهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Any person who uh, emancipates, frees a Muslim will have Allah rescue each limb of his, help, of his, that person, from the hellfire due to every limb of the one who he freed and emancipated for every limb of the person. Meaning that you, the person freed the slave, he'll going to be freed from the hellfire. It's a big reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith of Musa and Ashari radiallahu ta'ala, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu said, ثَلَاثَةٌ يُؤْتَوْنَ أَجْرَهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ Three people are to be given the reward twice. No, they're going to get the reward twice. رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمَنَ بِنَبِيِّهِ وَادْرَكَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَاسَ فَآمَنَ بِهِ وَاتَّبَعَهُ وَصَدَّقَهُ فَلَأْ وَجْرًا A person of people from the people of the book, Jew or a Christian, he believed in his prophet, be that Isa alayhi salam or Musa alayhi salam, and he then found out about the Prophet وسلم, and he believed in him, Prophet and followed him and attested him, like Saddaqa, uh, where he attested to his truthfulness. For him, there is a reward twice reward. Reward because he followed his Prophet, and reward because he followed Prophet Muhammad. The second and the point from the hadith uh, no, and a slave, own slave, who fulfills the right of Allah and the right of his owner. For him, there is two rewards because he's fulfilling the right of Allah as a slave of Allah and he's fulfilling the right of his owner as his slave in this case. And the third, and a per man who had a female slave and fed her well and taught her well and then freed her and married her for him, there are reward twice. I know the story of Aisha, the Allah of the We have encouragement many times in Quran. How many, uh, uh, anything that has been done like an expiation, you have what? Freeing a slave, freeing a slave. For example, uh, if a person, he uh, swore. And the first thing is he can, always we remember all he has to fast three days. That is the last Thing. First is freeing a slave to explanation. Then feeding 10 people or clothing them, 10 people. Then if not, then is uh, to fast three days. Or for example, uh, al-dihar, the person which says to his, his wife that you are like the back of my mom, meaning that you are haram for me. And he has to fast, what, 60 days, mudataliyat, 60 days cons consecutive. Or a person who killed a person mistakenly, has to fast, what, 60 days. And so all uh, that from 60 days and become even et khuraqabah and many of the ex expiation in Islam, it is what freeing slave because it is encouraged. But Islam found in the one the Islam came in time of the Prophet so that, that was the system which is known in that. You, you cannot uh, like just expiate or you can just not uh, take that system away while the people they were living there as a and, and as I mentioned many times, some people they will not have a life if they were outside of that system. And it's that that because as a slave he had everything his his, his food is provided they, he could be married he has his children everything that the owner provides for him and everything. so he go out and say, what I'm going to do out I, I don't have anything to do so Alhamdulillah is provides for me so this is the case but Islam encouraged so here we have the story of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha one day Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha it came to her hundred thousand there are more than you know, a hundred thousand, a big, uh, huge amount of money. And Aisha, Allah Ta'ala, from the beginning of the day till the end of the day, she gave all this abhidah, the whole thing, all for the sake of Allah. When Abdullah ibn Zubayr heard about that, he became upset. Who is Abdullah ibn Zubayr? What, what is he to Aisha? Come on. Nephew. Nephew. It's the son of the son of his sister. Son of his sister. 
So Aisha Dallah, if Abdullah is Zubair, his aunt. So Abdullah is Zubair, when he heard that, he said, what is this? And he, all of this money, and she gave it in one day. So he became upset and said, Wallahi la ahjuran. I will not, I will not, I will make hajar to Aisha. I will boycott. When the news reached Aisha, the Lord, huh, she became very upset. <laughs> Who are you? And even if you are the, and you are the, the son of my uh, sister, said, you are saying that, and I am umbuk, and I am the, in Islam, the, the aunt is considered as, as, um, as my mother too. Plus, she is the mother of the believers, the, the wife of the Prophet. So, so. He said, Wallahi la, 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 I will not speak to him. I will not speak to him. That's it. She won't speak to him. Then when they told Abdullah bin Zubair, he became very, very upset for them. I said, how? I? So, so he repented, kind of. So he gone. She would not speak to him. She would talk, tell, yeah, aunt, I'm, I'm, forgive me. She would not speak to him. That's it. So one day, some uh, of other Sahab Radulah went to Aisha, don't to ask for her. So Abdullah bin Zubair go, went with him. And she, they asked, it's allowed for us? You give us permission to enter? And she said, yes. Said, it said, Kulluna, all of us. He didn't mention a name. They did all of you. And they enter. The moment they enter, normally, the Umuhad al Mu'minin, they have a curtain. So they speak behind the curtain. They are not like that my, nowadays. Or that, nowadays, like lady speakers, and you know, guys, so, mashallah, becoming shaykhat and giving the, the talk to the, oh, Aisha, Allah ta'ala, and Allah, how they used to give the, the, the talk. And she is the mother of the believers, meaning that she's considered like a mom. mom. And nowadays, mashallah, everybody be becomes a sheikh, better than she sheikhs. So whatever. So behind the curtain. Abdullah bin Zubair goes behind the curtain because the other is it's, it's uh, mashallah. That girl and goes and caps her from, from embraces her from behind and said, yeah, like, ask for forgiveness. Please forgive me. And then, so Aisha, Allah ta'ala, she accepted that from him. Now, but what? She swore by Allah that she will not speak to him all of his life. That's what she swore before. So what did she do? She has to expiate for that. So she uh, emancipated or freed 40 slaves. for zero. 40 slaves because of that. So that's why I brought the story in. And for this reason, so she emancipated or freed 40 slaves because of that. Radiallahu anhunna ajma'in. Wa anhunna mumahad al-mumina wa anisahabu fi ajma'in al-arab al-alameen. Uh, what is the best slave to free? What is the best to free? Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala narrates that he, he said, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyu al-amali aftal, which one of these are the best? Or is the best? He said, iman billahi wa jihadun fi sabili, uh, iman, uh, uh, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, doing jihad in, uh, in, uh, struggle in his path. He said, what about the riqab? What about the slaves? Which one is best to, to free? He said, a'laha thamanan and said the one which which has the highest price and who is dearest to his owners. That's why we have the ayah in Quran. Lan tanal birra hatta tunfiku mimma tuhibu. You will not reach the piety and the highest grade of that until you give from what you love. So even the slaves, slaves were considered what a part of the wealth in that time. Part of the wealth. So that's why you'll you give that one which you love most, the strongest, the best, which have the highest price. What is it preferred to free slaves? Obviously, anytime, but it's preferred. Uh, Asma bin, bin Debakr says that Prophet ordered to free slaves during the eclipse. Eclipse is more because of that situation, it's encouraged for, for us to give sadaqat, it's encouraged for us to. Uh, seek forgiveness from Allah to uh, of course uh, to us to make the tasbih that uh, all of these so that's in that case because we're we're scared of the punishment of Allah Azza wa in that uh, time. What are the causes of emancipation or causes of, uh, of slave being free? What is called asbabul Number one, emancipation can be by the owner voluntarily freeing the slave out of desire to please Allah, as we mentioned. Because you have that hadith, so he, he just want to do it for the sake of Allah. That's what he wants to uh, free them. Number two, yahsulu bil mulk can occur through ownership. That is, if pay attention to this, if anyone comes into possession of a relative within the prohibited degrees of marriage, a slave becomes free. What other uh, that al al maharim, yani 
If a person, for example, happened to be that he has, uh, for example, his sister or his mother as a or father or uh, aunt or uncle, if a lady, uh, as the uh, as a slave, okay, automatically that person is considered what he becomes free. He cannot own one relative that it's allowed or it's not allowed for him to get married to. You understand? If it's like more, which is allowed, it's allowed. It's uh, which is allowed to get married to, no, uh, no problem. He has to. Uh, but in this case, if he has under his ownership, he became a person who is a, or she is a relative of him that's, uh, that is not allowed to marry to be made married to, then automatically he or she becomes free. He or she becomes free. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Hadith Samarad bin Juduk, Man malaka dha rahimin muharramin fahuwa hukm. If anyone owns a relative within the prohibited degrees of marriage, he is free. Another way is a slave can be emancipated if part of his ownership is free. In other words, if a slave is co-owned by partners. Fulan wa alan, they have, there are three owners of a slave. And one of them said, I want to free this, this guy. Okay, when free this guy, but, but he has only one third of the, that. He doesn't have the whole thing. So if he has the, that, the person is considered free, but he has to pay the portion of the two other owners. If he has the means. If he doesn't have the means, that, he cannot do anything. But if he has the means, he is owe, he owes to them to pay back, unless they say okay, we, we, we uh, free that him too. So that's why a, it's called that it, there is a ways uh, that right automatically the person should be freed if the person has the means. One, if if a part of it is free, meaning that you have three or four uh, co a couple of people are on him. If a part of him free, that he has to be free. You cannot be like one part is free and one part is not. Which is I mean, the hand is free and the 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 other hand is not. Cannot be like that. Abdullah bin Umar narrated the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever frees his share in a slave and he has the money for the rest of the price of the slave, the slave should be fairly evaluated and should give his partners their share and free the slave completely. Otherwise, he has freed only the portion he has freed. Only the portion he has freed. If the emancipator, the one who frees the slave, does not have the means to free the slave, he has only freed that portion. However, the slave should then try to work to pay off the remainder of the money for his freedom, so that the owners may receive his complete value. Abu Rayyan narrated the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever frees his portion of a slave should free the slave completely by paying the rest of his price if he has the means to do so. Otherwise, the value of the slave is to be estimated he should, should be helped to work without hardship to pay the rest of his value. So that's why we have actually we have six types of, of, of people. One is a person who is free. Everybody is free. You have an answer, a person who is Abdul Mahd. He is a slave. Then you have a person who is Muba'al. Muba'al, then part of it is free and part is not, as the person who are uh, like multiple owners of it. Then you have Al Mukatab. Mukatab, we're going to go to that, inshallah, but just in, in general, giving. Mukatab is a person who he writes a contract with the owner. So he has he's going to do something. He was going to work this, going to do that work, and he's going to pay the owner for his freedom. Then you have a mudabbar. Mudabbar is the person who writes, uh, oh, the person before he passing away, he says, you as my slave, you're going to be freed at, at my death. If I die, you're free. That's a mudabbar. Why mudabbar? Because in Arabic, dubur means, dubur is the, the ending of something. So at the end of my life, you're going to be free. And then you have Ummu Walad. Ummu Walad, if the person, as you mentioned, uh, he marries one of his slaves, automatically she becomes uh, free. So he becomes, so if he, if he marries her and uh, the, 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 the son, or if, if uh, she's pregnant and gets, uh, give birth to a son or a daughter, that becomes, it's, it's free or automatically. It's because it's the son or the daughter of the, the slave. So we have six categories of like uh, of people in this case uh, freeing a slave upon one's death as we mentioned was this al mudabbar as uh, we said the, the other time a slave can be freed upon one's death by being told if i die you are free after my death 
In such a case, when the person dies, the, the slave will become free as long as the value of the slave is less than one third of the deceased property. It's very important. Why? Who can tell me why? Figure. Huh? Maximum. Yes, maximum you can give sadaqa or wasiya in your property is one third. They are considered property. That's that's why. So Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu when he mentioned a man died while having six slaves and no other wealth, and he had freed them upon his death. So he left. He wrote and said that you are free uh, when, I, when I die. The Messenger of Allah Sallam divided them into three groups, two, two, two. Then drew lots between them. And then he freed two of them and keeping four of them as slaves. Why? It was one third. Two of them, and Qadr Allah drew lots and keeping four of them. He then had harsh words for what the deceased had done. Because also, this is wrong because... You have to, the two-third is for your the people, yani the, those who inherit from you. Uh, it is valid to sell or give away a slave who was declared free upon one's death. Jabir ibn Abdullah, he said the Prophet found out about a man from his companions who had declared the setting free of his slave upon his death. The same thing like the other one. What was that called? Al Mudabbar, al tadbir However, the man had no other wealth, and he had no other wealth. Than, than that. But before the man's death, before the man, the Prophet sold him for 800 dirhams and sent that money to him, to the owner to, to give to the, the people who will inherit. Okay, the other one was what, what was the al-mukatib, huh? al-mukatib, the abd who writes or makes an agreement to work for once for the freedom. Al-kitab is a contract where the slave is given his freedom in exchange for some agreed upon he finished or that. For example, he said, like, you're going to work for me two more years. You're going to achieve this and that and do that. And then you're going to, or you're going to pay me this much. Because he works, makes money, you're going to pay me this much. Uh, what's the ruling of this? Uh, if the slave asks his owner for such a contract, the ruling is it's wajib. It's an obligation upon the owner to respond positively. It's not his choice. If the, the person, the slave said to him that I, I want to write a contract with you, I'm going to do this and that, and I'm going to pay this much, we're going to bring that. You, It's an wajib obligation on the owner to give his freedom after uh, fulfilling what the, the slave fulfilled. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and such as your slaves are seek as seek writing for freedom, emancipation. Give them such writing if you know that they are good and trustworthy. There's a, a story from Musa bin Anas uh, uh, that mentioned Sirin asked Anas for a contract for freedom. And he owns a lot of wealth. He had a lot of wealth. So he had to be back. But Anas refused. He went to Omar al-Khattab who told him, write the, Umar al-Khattab said, you have to write the contract for him. Anas again refused. Umar al-Khattab beat him with his stick, dirra, and read the, and read the ayah. Huh? And give them such writing if you know that they are good and trustworthy. So write the contract. That's what the Allah is saying to the Quran. How are you refusing that? So, when the slave becomes free in, in, this, in this contract, when the slave fulfills the conditions of the contract or when the owner releases him from its obligation, he becomes free. Otherwise, he remains a slave until he fully satisfies the contract. Amr al I narrated from his father on the authority of his grandfather that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the slave who has contracted to pay for his freedom remains a slave as long as even a dirham is left according to his contract. So he has to be paid back. Okay, is it allowed to sell a slave who has contracted to work for his freedom? And if this is a slave, he has a contract with his owner. Is it allowed to sell him or not? It is valid to sell such a slave if he accepts the slave. Amra ibn bint Abdul Rahman said, Barira went to Aisha, ta'ala, and the mother of the believers, to seek for help in being freed. She asked Aisha to seek for help to being freed from her people, from the, uh, the, the owners. Aisha ta'ala said to her, if your people want the remainder of price all at once and I free you, I shall do so. And you want the, was it what is left from the price? I'll pay for you and I'll take you. And I'll, because she, she took her and want to free her. Barira mentioned that to her people and they said, no, 
unless the relationship of wala is for us. What's the relationship of wala? Al wala, it's the 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 right of the owner of the slave to inherit from the slave if the slave dies. Okay, so they said she can pay us the money, and we want to keep that. So it doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, and I sell you, and then I need to, I want to gain something from you again, even after sale. So Malik, he said that Yahya said, Amra then said that Aisha Allah Ta'ala mentioned that, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, buy her and set her free as the relationship of wala is only for the one, al wala liman a'taq, for the one who does the free. And you that does do the free, you are the one who deserves to inherit from her, not the one who already sold her. Okay, so al wala, as I said, establishes the right of inheritance for the one who does the freeing from the one uh, who has been freed. But pay attention the one having the relationship of wala only inherits if the freed slave does not have any male relatives to inherit from him. The person, for, for example, the person who is freed slave, Aisha Allah in this case, he, she freed Barira. If Barira she passes away, uh, without getting married, no children, not, nothing, and no, no male relative to her, then Aisha Allah will inherit in this case. If she gets married and uh, the, the husband is alive or she has a son or so, in this case, the person who freed her, or the slave, doesn't have the right to inherit because she already has, has the uh, male relatives that they can inherit from her. It is not allowed to sell the right of wala, nor can one give it as a way as a gift. As somebody that, uh, for example, in this case, the owner who freed the slave said, like, oh, I, will, I will give the, the right of inheriting from you to, to my, my brother. Or my, no, it's not allowed. Or sell it. It's not allowed. The Prophet ﷺ forbade the selling of or the gifting of al wala. With this, we conclude uh, this book. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who... Uh, are granted beneficial knowledge and uh, practice that to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we reward the author and uh, our uh, ulama and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all of those who are that they say good words and they practice that in their daily life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean inshallah we're gonna, we're gonna do or decide another book inshallah in, uh, in other days to come we ask Allah as to forgive our sins and to grant us his pleasure in dunya and hereafter. Allahumma ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa nabiya wa alhamdulillah sallahu alayhi wa ajma'in. Subhanak Allahumma hamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.